all right, let's finally get the show on the road. So we're going to talk about licensing 101, um, creative commons licensing, that is. So when we look at a traditional copyright and one of the foundational concepts to understand when we are looking at creative commons licensing is it is a form of copyright protection. So a lot of times when people start their OER journey, they think of creative commons licensing or open, openly licensing content is that it doesn't have a copyright. And that's not true. Creative commons licensing, it just changes traditional copyright into a more open version of it. So when we look at a traditional copyright and it has a little C and says copyright protected, we are giving somebody permission when we create something in a typical traditional copyright to retain that content. So if you buy something that's copyright protected, you can retain it. That's the only options that you have. It's copyright protected. However, when we look at an openly licensed content, we are going to have the opportunities to do much more than that. So let's start at the, at the base. The opposite of something that is copyright protected is something that is in the public domain. So this is where something that is not protected by copyright, somebody doesn't want attribution to it, that's just out there and it's completely in the public domain. And um, I'm sure if you haven't already heard, January 1st is lovingly called in the OER world public domain day because you have all sorts of works that have been released from their copyright. And this is why you get so many adaptations of things like Cinderella and Snow White because it's in the public domain and nobody owns the copyright to that anymore. It's expired. I don't wanna go into the details of that, but you have an option that you can put something in the public domain and that is copyright free. That's not what we're asking our authors to do, but it's an, always an option that you have is you can put something completely in the public domain and you've told people do whatever it is you want to do with it. That is different than what putting a Creative Commons licensing on something it is. Um, I don't think I wanna go into to the weeds of this because I wanna settle on copyright, um, but I'll give you my slides, but there is certain dates affixed to when things go into the public domain. And if you ever want to take a look at the list, you can always Google things that go into the public domain 2025 or things that go into public domain 2026. And you get this long list of things where the copyright has expired. It's, it's kind of fun. It was a big deal because actually the original iteration of Steamboat Willie for Disney went into public domain this year. Um, Sarah, what was the example that we saw where Steamboat Willie was used? It was in a Jeep. It was on a Jeep ad. And so now I'm guessing we're going to start seeing a lot right. of that because now the original iteration of Mickey Mouse Steamboat Willie version of it is in the public domain. So it's not copyright protected by Disney under the public domain law. So I'm, I'm guessing we're going to start seeing quite a few of those. Um, so different, different cases under um, public domain. Another option that we have, and we usually use this and abuse this very much in a higher education, especially in a nonprofit such as ours, is we use the comment fair use. So there's actually four tests of fair use. There isn't something that says it has to be a certain percentage and then I get to use it without violating copyright. It's actually there's four reasons that something can fall into fair use but these are also very subjective depending on the legal precedents and even the judge that's looking at it. So in order for something to be used under fair use and what the term fair use refers to is that it is something copyright protected, but I can use it under these conditions, the purpose and the character of the use. And this is where we as a nonprofit higher education like to fall under fair use is that we are education-based, we're not commercial, so we're not making money off of this. We're serving the public good um, in order to use this content. The nature of the copyrighted work, fiction is more likely to be able to be used under fair use than nonfiction, and the amount of work used. So here is where this big wives' tale myth comes about, and I'm sure all of you have heard it before. Have you ever heard, well, I'm only using less than 10% of the book, so it's okay for me to go and photocopy in the library. This is documented nowhere in law. We just like to say 10% for some arbitrary reason. The 
less of the percentage, it more likely will fall under fair use. But there's actually no percentage that is written into law that's okay to use fair use. If you're using more and trying to claim fair use, it's less likely going to be okayed by a judge. And then the impact on the value of the work used. So if an artist is trying to make a living and selling a painting and you're using it under fair use and keeping that artist from making a living, it's less likely going to be used in your favor for fair use. As I talked about when I first started this, it's that the only way that fair use is determined is through court proceedings. So we look at other judges' proceedings to think about if this is fair use. Some people use it more robustly, some people use it less, but we do know that it is a copyright violation every time we go and we just put photocopies of the book and then send that PDF out to our students. That is why we want to use OER because it is not in violation of anybody's rights. Technically, when we go photocopy a book in the library and hand out the PDF to our students, we are violating somebody's rights, copyrights to those books. Anything you wanted to add, Sarah? Okay. So what are the options that we have as far as what we choose to license the work that we create and the works that we use um, as OER um, creators and remixers? And I'll clarify those in just a second. What putting a Creative Commons license does is it transforms the typical all rights reserved copyright. So remember, all we could do under a traditional copyright is to retain content. It transforms that traditional copyright into some rights reserved. And that's going to be very important because I, what I really want authors to understand when they're creating something under OER is we're not asking you to give up all your rights at all. We're asking you to change what your rights are under a Creative Commons licensing than what they would be under a copyright. We're allowing creators to retain their copyright while you're also allowing others to copy the content, to redistribute the content, to revise the content, whichever permission is going to fit what you want the downstream user to use. We're gonna look at the icons of what each of those indicate in just a second. It allows you as the creator or somebody else's work that you've used to continue to get attribution. We don't have as much of that needing to publish or publish or die um, that they do in the four years here. But for some of us, publishing is important. We feel it's an obligation under our academic work, or maybe we are looking to promote that to a different entity, whatever it might be. A publishing under a Creative Commons license isn't asking you to give up that attribution or saying that you can't publish under your name at all. Um, we'll look at that is the core element of all Creative Commons licensing is that attribution. The CC license are built into copyright, so they'll last as long as the copyright does. So that's life plus 70 years in the United States. So it is a form of copyright protection. And that's what we have to keep remembering. You're not giving up copyright, you're just changing it into a different form of copyright protection. Okay, so what are all these icons uh, mean as you're starting to either create OER yourself, what icons do you want to use? But more importantly, what most of us are doing is we're remixing and combining and using different OER to create one of our own or simply using it in our class as it. So you'll come across all of these icons and we really want to figure out what do each of these icons truly mean. Here is the most common or the, the core of our creative licensing that we'll see. So the first one you're going to see is what's called CC BY, and it's going to be this little man. And this is the, the core. It's what every single Creative Commons license start with. And this means it's attribution. So it's saying this is the person that published the content. I am the creator. No matter what other license you add on top of it, we'll talk about these, you're always going to have that core attribution. So you will always be attributed as the core author. And if you're using OER downstream, you always want to use that attribution as well. You never want to remove the attribution from an OER that you're using. So the next one that you're going to see is this little circular arrow. 
share alike, and that's SA. So what that means is that if you're using a content and it has that share alike icon on it, you need to use the same license that is on that content. So if it has an SA, no matter what the license is, you have to share that content using the same license. And if it has more restrictive items on top of it, you have to use that same license on the newly created content. And C with a little dollar sign is non-commercial, meaning you cannot make money off of this OER. Um, this is kind of a weird one because OER is out there in, in um, the ability to be used by anybody. So even when publishers will take and try and make money off of a um, OER that has a CC by content, you can always find the original out there despite a publisher trying to share it, uh, sell it. And you'd be shocked at how often this is happening with publishers right now. They'll take an OER that's openly licensed and put something else on top of it and repackage it and make money off of it. So that's why a lot of authors have gone to putting this NC license on it. It's not something I advocate for because the content will always be out there free. Just because a publisher tries to make money off it, it doesn't mean it's also available for free. Non-derivatives. This is what we refer to as FOPEN, so fake open. When you put a non-derivatives license on it, it means that it cannot be revised in any way. They can't change anything about it. So if you have, say, a whole book that has an ND license, Technically, what that license is saying is you can't change anything about the book. You cannot pull it apart. You cannot use pieces of it. So even if it's a chapter that has an ND license on it, then you can't change anything about it. The context that I see an ND most appropriately used is if an artist has created a work and they don't want anything about it to be changed. It might be something that is um, very important or very significant, and they don't want anything about that created work to be changed. They don't mind if somebody reuses it um, or redistributes it. It can't just be um, changed in any way at all. Any questions yet about those core licensing? Okay, so here is just some of the ways that you might see these licensed combined. So we understand what those core icons each mean an artist or a creator will choose to combine those icons in a way that they want the downstream user to know you can use your their content. So if we have this CC BY, what you're saying is that this is the most open form of Creative Commons licensing. And this is what we strongly advocate authors to um, use in their created works. It means that downstream users can distribute, remix, tweak, build upon work, even use commercially, as long as you credit the original creator, as long as you give attribution to the person that has created the original work. It's the most recommended form of license because it makes it the easiest to remix and use the work the best um, to the downstream user's way. When you have a CC by SA, remember that SA is share alike, you're saying that others may remix, tweak, and build upon a work even for commercial purposes, as long as they credit and license new creations under the identical terms. So if you see that essay license on there, you have to use that exact same license structure. All new works will carry the same license. So any derivatives will also allow commercial use because it doesn't have that NC on there. So you have the next one where we have the CC BY. Again, you see that common little stick guy, and that means every piece of created work needs to have that attribution and ND, so the non-derivatives. You may redistribute for commercial and non-commercial purposes as long as the work is passed along unchanged, whole, and with proper attribution. That unchanged is the big thing. An ND license, non-derivatives, means it cannot be changed in any way. CC by NC, we have that non-commercial. Others may remix, tweak, and build upon a work non-commercially and Although new works must also attribute the original and be non-commercial, non-derivative works don't have to be licensed under the same terms. Because it does not have that SA on there, 
you can change the license of the new derivative work. So you can't change the license on the original, but if you take it and you change it and you modify it and you put a new license on it, it doesn't have to have the same license. You always want to attribute the original author, but it doesn't have to have the same license. We're starting to get more complex as we're adding additional icons. So we have the CC BY, which means the attribution, NC, non-commercial, and share alike. So you're telling the downstream user that they may remix, tweak, and build upon a work non-commercially, that NC, as long as they credit the original and license their new creations under the identical terms. So we have that CC BY and that share alike, which is saying identical terms every new derivative has to be licensed under those identical terms. Next one, CC BY, NC, and non-derivative. So I hope now you're starting to see how these are combining to tell the downstream author exactly what you want to be done or don't want to be done with your created work. The most restrictive of the six main license, these license, this license would allow others to download a work and share them with others as long as they attribute the original, their CC BY, don't change it in any way, ND, and cannot use it non-commercially. So again, having that ND license is the most restrictive and most in the OER world don't consider that to be an open license because the, the whole purpose of an open license is that you can change the content to meet your individual needs or the needs of your students. Any questions or anything you wanna add, Sarah? Okay, this is just a diagram so you can see the progression of how it goes from the most often. So CC0, it just means it's in the public domain. Um, a lot of the OER people advocate for this because then it's letting people clearly know, I want this to be in the public domain. You have to actively choose for something to go into the public domain. When we create a work, it automatically has a copyright protection on it. So a lot of times when I'm talking to authors and they say, no, I just, I wanna create it and anybody can use it. I, I don't wanna have my name on it. And that's absolutely fine. We wanna put a CC zero license on it because then everybody knows that this is not copyright protected. Remember that's giving up all rights to the work. I put it in the public domain. CC BY would be the next open. And then down to anything with that ND license is not really open. I love the term FOPEN because it's fake open. We have a Creative Commons license on there, but that non-derivative icon really means it's not truly capturing the sense of what an open license does. And you'll notice that each of these, again, has the attribution requirement. I love going and seeing how many scientific journals are now being produced with a CC BY license because we're really helping to acknowledge that a Creative Commons license is not saying that people aren't getting the credit that's due for their published work. You notice that every single one of these, aside from the public domain, is giving you that attribution as a creative writer. It's just allowing the downstream user of your creative work to use it in different ways. We have to be careful when we start combining licenses. So we really need to be aware that um, not all licensed can be combined together. So one of the things that I recommend highly as authors start to look at different openly licensed content is to keep the attribution with that license. If you keep the attributions with the individual licensed work and make sure that it is clearly identified, then you don't have to worry as much about mixing and matching works aside from that ND license. So let's just really quickly look at how it might be worked. So if you have something that has the NC or the CC by NC ND, you can copy and publish it. Attribution is requiring it. You can't use it for commercial use. You can't modify or adapt and you can't change your, your license. Um, so this is just another visual representation. I think I'm gonna go to the next slide um, so that we can, oh, that was it. Okay, so now what are the questions that you might have about what this means? What does um, licensing mean? Oh, go ahead, Sarah. 
I did want to throw out there um, the two last licenses. While they're not, while they're considered open, they still work under ZTC. So if you find a textbook or a, a work that you really love and you don't want to change it, and you're able to switch your course over to using um, that work, while it's not technically OER, it would still provide a zero cost option for the students. Um, and so still a great option, even if it's not um, fully usable under the, the R's of OER. That's an, a really good point to make. It doesn't mean that you can't use it because it is, it's still um, a ZTC course. Okay. I know that was a quick run through, but we really wanted to get time to be able to ask questions about licensing. It, it really is simple and yet it can be complicated, but what you're wanting to look for as you go through and are searching for your OER content are all of those icons that you see. I'm trying to multitask and share my screen again at the same time and I'm not doing a good job. I thought I was gonna be able to be super smooth and do it. So most of the time when you go through um, a piece of content, you're going to see one of these icons. And that's what's going to let you know that it is an openly licensed piece of content. Sometimes they'll just say, this is copyright protected under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. So when people read something like that and they see copyright protected, they'll automatically think, oh no, I can't use this. But remember, a Creative Commons is a copyright protected piece of content. You're just letting the downstream author know that they can do more than these to that piece of work. So it's just changing what it transforming, I like that term, from a full copyright protected into whatever this license says you can do with that piece of work. So a question from Georgia, if a, I want students to use an infographic for a lab that has a non-derivative license, could I put a link to the assignment to the original website? Yeah, absolutely. And you can do that with any piece of content if you want to make a ZTC. When I first started, there wasn't any OER in child development, which is the discipline that I teach in. But there was a lot of publicly available pieces of content that I could link students out to and use in my course. I wasn't even using fair use. I was just linking students out and going in there. But at the end, the infographic has a non-derivative license. You can even still use it as part of your OER if you don't change it. So if you want to take that infographic holistically and put it into another piece of OER, as long as you don't modify that infographic in any way, you can still use it in an OER that you've created. Does that make sense? You just can't change it in any way. You can't change the colors, you can't crop things out, but if you use something holistically, it can be combined with other OERs. That's where you just wanna make sure and keep that attribution separate so the downstream users know this infographic is licensed differently. And so a lot of times you'll look at pieces of content and it'll say mixed licenses on there. I know most books now it says this is licensed under a Creative Commons license unless otherwise specified. So that's where you want to make sure if you're looking and pulling apart a whole Creative Commons licensed or OER book, look at the individual license of the content because it might not be the same that the book, but the author hopefully has taken that attribution with that piece of content. As you start building your OER in whatever capacity you are, that's why keeping the license and the original work with that content is going to be so important. If you've been doing this work for a month or two months and you realize that you didn't bring those licenses over, you're going to be having to do a lot of backtracking to make sure that you're giving attribution to all the original authors. Any other questions? You're welcome. It really gets to be one of those things that you get pretty good at hunting down the different license. Sometimes authors are really great about putting the 
icons on there, but a lot of times it's having to really dig down into the terms of use for a particular item. Many items will say free to use for educational settings. That is not an open license. That is a ZTC piece of content. So you can use it in an educational setting. So you can cut and paste and put it in your course, but make sure and keep the references because they've said you can use in an educational setting, but it doesn't mean you can revise and change it. They have not given it an open license to allow you to change it in any way. Any other questions? Does anybody have any examples of pieces of content you're having a hard time finding the licensing on it? <laughs> or we can take a second, if it would be beneficial to take a look at some openly licensed content and you guys can see if you can locate the license. I'll pull one up. All right, let's take a look at some of the courses in biology. Okay. And my toolbar once again. All right. So if we're looking at this piece of content, what is the license that it has? It's a horrible example, but it was the first one that came up. It says a CK. 12 license, which I don't even know what that is. So let's go into another page. LibreText is one of my go-to places. So if you're looking for OER, and most of you have probably met with your OER coordinators already, um, LibreText is a great place to find content. All right, let's go find another example. OpenStax is better. So if we go into a page and we scroll down, we see right here, we don't see any of those icons. So it says <clears throat> you have the, the content, unit one, the chemistry life is shared under a CC by 4.0 license. So what would that mean you could do with this content? If you have a CC by license, what does that mean you can do with the content? Remember, you have to provide the author's name and that's it. So the author is saying, you can use this, you can revise it, you can retain it, you can re, um, remix it, you can redistribute it. All you need to do is give me attribution. Now, one of the ways, let's see if I can pull up Springer is one of the openly licensed research articles and this is where it can be a little bit confusing because they look like they have a creative com or they have a fully restricted copyright license but if you go and take a look at the license then it allows you what you can do with it oh we got books maybe if i can do this all right Sarah, do you have an example ready while I pull up a? Yeah, one go-to for me when I'm, I'm showing people um, where everything is, is Wikipedia. So if you, if you go to the bottom, oh, sorry, got my little sister to look at some minute. <laughs> if you go to the bottom of a Wikipedia page, you're gonna find um, a Creative Commons attribution. 
Uh, so this one is a creative commons attribution share alike. Um, and I believe most Wikipedia pages are under either CC BY or CC BY SA, um, generally. All right, so let's do a quick Google search and this will be a good way to be able to show. Thank you, Sarah. Sorry, I transitioned too quickly there. So if you go in and I don't know if you have used this trick yet, um, aside from using LibreText, Google is the best place, one of the best places to find openly licensed content. However, you have to know how to tell it to look for only openly licensed content. So let's say I put in early childhood education and I just do an open search. I've got, and here's my algorithms that's saying, hey, I bet you're interested in Reedley College because that's where I teach. And I have a lot of the different options that are available to me as I go and um, search. But I wanna make sure that I'm only looking at openly licensed content. So after I search, I'm gonna go to this gear on the right-hand side go to advanced search, usage rights, and choose which usage rights I want only the content to show up. So depending on what you look, I just use free to use, free to use, share or modify advanced search. And now you can see that my content is going to change. And it's gonna give me education. But if I go into any of these places, I should be able to see openly licensed content. So let's go into here. And let's scroll down. Most of the time, the licensing is going to be at the bottom. So I'm going to scroll down. So what is this license telling me I can do with this content? It has a CC by license. It's telling me share, revise, remix, and what is the only thing that I need to do? Perfect, yep, give credit to the author, exactly. So I can revise, retain, remix, all that I need to do is give credit to the author. So let's look at another one, the International Journal of Childcare and Education Policy. And some people will think that no research articles are openly licensed, but there's actually quite a few now that are openly licensed. Most of the things from the state of California because of a law, and I can't remember what it is now, has to be openly licensed. So most of the things that have a .gov ending are pretty safe to be able to use. There are some exceptions if they've hired a private contractor, but most of them are pretty safe to be used. So if I scroll down to the bottom, Here is where it gets a little bit, um, you have to start looking at it because it says rights and permissions, open access. It says this article is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 and it spells it out right here, but I don't see any of the content. And if I were to look at it, like I see this copyright right here. So it can make me think, oh man, I can't use it. But you need to look in the context of the article and see, nope, actually they have given me permission to be able to, to use this. So it's just a 4.0 license. It doesn't specify any of the other so that you can use it as a CC BY license, okay? So you have to hunt for it because a lot of times you'll see things like this and it makes you think that it's copyright protected. But this individual author has said you can use this article in a Creative Commons format. Let's see if we can find another one. And sometimes Google's not all the time um, accurate either. But here we're looking at this. This is not a .gov. So you might think, oh man, it's, it's uh, protected. Mm -hmm. Yes, most .gov is open. There's going to be some exceptions if the government has used a private contractor and one of the criteria for that contracted work is a different license but most of the stuff with .gov is gonna be openly licensed. You might have to search for it, but it, it should be. So on here we have a, 
uh, website and we see it has this CC BY license on there. And with websites, you do have to be careful because it might be a different license for something that is linked to it. So whenever you can find it, you wanna see if there's a different license that is on um, that article, just, just to make sure, or check and see what the terms of use of the related content um, on that uh, information that you wanna use is. Let's take a look at one more. Here's another article. The same thing. This is a great scientific um, article to be able to use. Most of the licensing is going to be on the bottom. Frontiers is the other one that I really like. And right here, this can throw you off because it says copyright. And so many people that haven't used OER a lot will like, oh man, I can't use this copyright protected. But don't forget that a Creative Commons license is a form of copyright protection as well. It's just changing what those rights are. So if you keep reading it, it says this is copyright protected. It's an open access under the Creative Commons CC BY license. So it is copyright protected with a CC BY license. That's a really an important thing to understand because I, when I was first looking at it, I would see that copyright sign and go, oh no, I can't use it, which is not true. A CC BY license is a copyright license. It's just transforming those rights into those revise, redistribute, reuse, and remix. So this is a really good um, example to, to dive down more deeply. And it's really awesome to be able to use articles like this to find additional resources because a lot of the times they'll have used other openly licensed sources um, as well. Not all the time, so you have to uh, be aware of that, but sometimes. All right, you want one more example? Let's see if we can find one. Are any disciplines that you guys are coming from that you want me to take a look at and find something? We see if we can locate a license. Oh, um, while you guys are thinking, uh, let's look at YouTube videos real quick and then I'll pull up some chemistry stuff. So if I go to a YouTube video, YouTube is, whoops, YouTube is free. It is not openly licensed. It is copyright protected. So this would be a ZTC piece of content and you can embed it in your Canvas course or embed it and it's linking it over. But what you want to do is you want to search for openly licensed content because this is really going to be the, um, let me just show you where you can, and if you put videos on, you want to put it with a Creative Commons license as well. Oh man, Sarah, you don't have to take over. I haven't searched YouTube videos in a long time for finding the openly licensed. Let's see, here we go. So let's see, let's find one in chemistry here. Filters. Let's see. Sarah's having to remind me where to find the licensing. It did say Creative Commons under. Oh, did it? I just skipped it. Oh, yep. here we go. Under Sorry. features. Perfect. All right. So right here, if you shift it to Creative Commons licensing, it's going to change the pieces of video that have are available to you. And remember, you can still use things that aren't openly licensed, but it's always great to be able to see and use something under the Creative Commons license. Um, and when you put upload all, all, uh, authentic content into YouTube, put a Creative Commons license on it. So now we can see here all the things that are openly licensed that given a Creative Commons license under chemistry in YouTube. But let's see, is there any specific concept in chemistry that we wanna look at Google real quick in? Let's look under chemistry here. So we need to make sure, and that's one of the things that you have to be aware of when you're searching using Google is that you need to go and revise the search terms every single time. So you can see how it defaulted back to not filtered. And I just like to double check. 
lots in Wikipedia. Wikipedia is an excellent source. I know a lot of scholars that don't use it. It really is a cool source to be able to find content into. So we have things we don't know. Let's see what the license is for this. And so here, here's a good example. So we have a CC BY, what does the SA stand for? What is that author telling you that you need to do if you redistribute this content again? Share like, perfect. So if I use any of this content that's on here and I intermix it in my content, my content then has to be licensed under a share alike license. This is one of the reasons that I like to clearly identify the content because I can use it in the context of my created sources, but I just identify that this piece is from this source and it has a share alike license on it. So you can see here's lots of great places you can find chemistry content and you can fur further refine it to additional concepts if you want to break it down. Just like we learned in grad school how to search different terms, use as many different terms you can because Google is algorithm. So it's going to pull things up differently depending on the terms you use. Let's do one last one. Forgot how to spell photography. Make sure we check our license. So here we have things that are saying are openly licensed. So let's look at this one and see. And photography is a great one be, to, to take a look at. I haven't looked at it, but it is something where you're going to find a lot more copyright protection. So it's interesting to see what people choose. So what is this licensed as? It's right in the left bottom right here by NC. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? CC by NC. What is the author telling us we can and can't do with their content? We can't make money off of it, right? So that NC means non-commercial. So I can't take their pho photograph and sell it, but I can do That's anything right. else with it. I can cut and paste it, I can download it, anything that is on this page, I can use it. It looks like there's lots of different, have to be careful with the sponsor because this is Google's sneaky way to get you into non openly licensed content. They're identifying it, but it doesn't mean it's openly licensed. So they get a little bit sneaky. But we've got some press books or photography books. So Google is my, my go-to. I really love searching. I find all sorts of new resources um, out there. Um, the only time when it says um, can be used, but only in education, it'll very clearly say that in the terms of use. So if we're looking at it like in early childhood education, um, there's an organization called the Program for Infant Toddler Caregivers, and that says you can use it only for educational redistribution. So you'll see that a lot on websites. And that means that you can use it in your class, but if you're creating an OER, you can't put that in your OER because that your openly licensed textbook or piece of content, but you can use it for your class without worry. And Sarah just put in the chat that the Library of Con uh, Congress is a great resource for uh, Creative Commons fair use and public domain content. Thanks, Sarah. Okay, any other content, of, or content, any other questions about the basics of openly licensing, of open licensing? Okay, well, hearing none, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording. Oh.